Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. In this video, we're going to discuss the UMTS circuit switched attach procedure. We're going to start by looking at the end-to-end -end signaling scenario. It's called the location update procedure. In so doing, we'll also identify how the identity check procedure works, as well as interaction with the HLR. So let's have a look at that end-to-end -end scenario. The mobile is going to send a message up to the MSC. Now it's worth pointing out, before it does, it will have established a connection to the radio network controller. The message, in this case, is a location update request from the handset up to the MSC. This is a NAS message, a non-access stratum message. Inside here, I'd expect a few parameters. The first would be the location area information. This is the old location information. I'll come back to that in a second. The other parameter in there is the mobile station class mark, the capabilities of the handset. I've also got the TIMSI, the temporary mobile subscriber identity. This is the alias, and this is linked to the old location information. So if the alias was Fred, I was Fred in this old location, and we can use that to correlate who you actually are. Now the MSC will look at that combination of TIMSI and old location and say, do I know you? And if it doesn't, it's going to go back to the mobile and say, I don't understand who you are, and it can do an identity request. And in this case, the identity request can be asking for the IMSI. It doesn't have to do this, but I'm just showing it as an example. So coming back, we've got an identity response. I'd expect to find the IMSI inside that message. Now, armed with the IMSI, the MSC is able to go and get security information. So typically, that's what would happen next. We'd go off and do an authentication and security mode command procedures. And assuming all that's successful, we can then move on with the attaching to the system. The next procedure you would typically see would be a common ID. The common ID is sent from the core network down to the RNC, and it includes the IMSI. The idea here is because the RNC is connected to the SGSN and the MSE, the circuit and the packet switch side, what we need to do is make sure that it knows the identity of this subscriber. So we pass it down in this common ID parameter. Assuming all that's been done, the MSC is able to now update the HLR and it sends a message called update location across to the HLR saying, I've got this subscriber. Again, the key thing in there will be the IMSI of that particular subscriber. It'll also contain some information about where the user currently is, so the address of the MSC and the VLR, the Visitor Location Register. That goes up to the HLR, and the HLR now can respond by inserting some subscription details. So we're going to expect to see for this particular IMSI some circuit switch subscription data. This is your profile about the services you can do whilst on this UMTS system. The MSC would acknowledge, say thank you very much for that subscription details, and then finally the HLR will come back confirming the location update, and everything is happy within the core network. The last thing we need to do is we need to signal back to the mobile with a location update accept message to say, yes, you're allowed on the system. Typically, we'll say you're allowed on the system in this location area as confirmation. We can also include the TIMSI, and this could be a new alias, so a new identity. Assuming that we get a new alias, a new TIMSI, I would expect a TIMSI reallocation complete message to be going back up to the MSC to say, thanks very much. So in summary, we've looked at the UMTS circuit switch attached procedure. We've identified that it's an end-to-end -end procedure. It can include identity checking. It can include security parameters. It includes the common ID, the IMSI going to the RNC, and it has interaction with the HLR to download the subscription profile. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.